start each season. It's something special again to look forward to. And um, I just think they, they're nice and shiny and they sit there with their little green stems. Um, they just really uh, have become part of what summer's, summer's all about. And of course, uh, Christmas too. It's, yeah, undeniably the Christmas fruit. This is The Producers. I'm Danny Vallant. You know the Australian summer has arrived when cherries turn up in the markets. Third generation cherry farmer Stephen Riseborough is director of his family's Cherry Hill Orchards. Central and northern Victorian locations allow the Riseboroughs to produce cherries through the late spring and summer harvesting season, supplying local and international markets. What are the rhythms of the seasons, the challenges of growing a temperamental crop in variable weather conditions, and the satisfactions of producing a fruit that people anticipate with excitement and eat with passion and a fond sense of tradition? Hi, my name's Steve Riseborough. I'm one of the owners of Cherry Hill Orchards. Uh, we're cherry producers based in Victoria uh, with several locations. So the locations uh, range from Cobram in the north uh, through to central Victoria, Strathbogies, uh, high country near Mansfield. Uh, that gets us through to mid mid and late season. And then we've got the Yarra Valley Orchards, of course, which are uh, probably more well known because they're open to the public. Uh, and that's also where we centrally pack all of our fruit. Uh, so we're only cherries and we produce from the start of November right through to February. We're in our 81st year, so it was my grandpa, George, who um, he, he found the farm and uh, with his brothers, they, they part cleared the farm by hand in those days. They, they worked extremely hard, that generation. And then my mum and dad uh, further developed the farm at Wandon, um, adding more blocks and increasing acreage. And then uh, with my brother and I, we've, we've taken on the business and expanded into those other regions I spoke about in northern and central Victoria. From a, a pretty young age, you know, there's always jobs to do and, and we really enjoyed it. It was good, honest work and, you know, a lot of variety of different work and that's one of the good things about working in, in cherries or other uh, fruit crops. Um, you know, there's always a different job to do, whether that was as a kid, you know, helping with the orchard pickups, picking the fruit up on the tractors and bringing it back to the uh, the pack house or you know, it might have been uh, stacking boxes or or making boxes in the day. I used to get a piece rate and used to make good money. I used to uh, work hard and work at night and all sorts of things. And that's how I earned, earned some money to buy a new motorbike. It was good times. But, you know, when cherries start, yeah, it's on. It's all busy, busy. And we go from just a few staff to uh, a lot of people picking, people packing, and uh, it's go, go, go. So it's changed a lot, you know. There was only us as the family in the old days, uh, helping with maybe one or two other staff throughout the year, and then uh, you'd ramp up with, you know, maybe fifty or may maybe maximum hundred pickers, and there'd be uh, a dozen or so in the sorting. You know, these days we've got hundreds of pickers, and there's about a hundred people sorting. So it's a bigger changed uh, environment which we're working in, but uh, it's still the same same fruit. Cherries aren't just cherries. How do they grow? What conditions do they love and hate? And what do customers particularly look for at Christmas time? We, we grow similar varieties and, and similar cherries to a, a lot of other producers out there, but um, we've really concentrated hard over the last, you know, 10 or 15 years on just every year getting more focused and, and uh, dedicated to being uh, attention to detail uh, with our pruning, our nutrition, how we handle the fruit, staff training, all those kinds of areas. Um, when we bring new staff in, we, we really try and tell them the story and get them to be part of the action. And, uh, you know, if we've got pickers who are really careful and doing a great job, well, that, that shows in the final product. So we're really, again, appreciative of everyone uh, chipping in and doing a great job. Blossom, it happens in September and October. Uh, and then, you know, after Blossom, the bees have done their work and that little tiny cherry, it's been pollinated and you've got cell division and those little green cherries that are on the tree, they're, they're growing and um, developing with the seed inside, of course. And uh, the early season varieties, they've got a lesser time between that Blossom period to when they're mature. So you'll see early season varieties, they're um, maybe a little bit smaller, 
Um, they can still be very sweet, but they're quite often a little bit softer. And um, so they come and go quickly. And then we move into the mid-season varieties like now, and they're really good quality and um, just that little bit bigger and more special. And that's obviously what uh, a lot of shoppers want at, at Christmas time, those really big premium cherries for, for Christmas. So the locations that cherries need, uh, they need to have good fertile soil, obviously, uh, an abundance of water, which we're, we're very lucky in these regions, depending on the year to year, of course. Uh, but then also frost free, uh, cherries don't like frost um, and areas that uh, hopefully aren't too wet. So, you know, in the really high rainfall areas, <clears throat> that can be a little bit risky in those, those spots. So uh, we've seen this year, uh, we're in a La Nina situation. There's there's a little bit more rain around than what we'd ideally like, so that reduces our marketable yield. Uh, but we're we're still picking, we're still packing, uh, and the optical machinery it, it sorts the fruit out. So what ends up on uh, the consumer, the shopper's table, um, it, it's still good fruit. Cherries love nice, warm, sunny days. They don't like extreme heat. Um, Frost is something to watch out for early spring. Luckily this year we didn't have frost of any sort. Um, hail and storms we, we don't like to see, of, of course, that can damage delicate fruit. But generally those sort of events are quite isolated. So if you hear of, you know, storms or hail, hail storms in a certain area, you know, it can be a case of your next door neighbour uh, missed it and you, you get it or, or the other way around, which is really unfortunate. But quite often it, it's not total devastation in one area. Um, but whereas we get uh, rain and it can split the cherries and that can be quite widespread and we've seen a little bit of that this season. Um, however, I mentioned about the optical grading, that that means that we pick the crop in its entirety and the machine essentially, as it just runs through, it, it just uh, sorts the fruit and any uh, split ones or, or defects, they just go into the waste bin and uh, the good ones spit out the other end. So it's it's pretty remarkable and it means we can keep the show on the road and, and keep supplying our customers. Um, our marketable yield goes down, of course, so it's not, not what we ever want, but uh, that's just part of farming and it's part of the story. Cherries are a pernickety crop that don't allow any room for error or relaxing. They need to be picked at just the right time, then cooled, sorted and packed quickly. The rhythms and processes around harvest have been impacted by technology and also by employment patterns, which have changed significantly over the years. Everything's really time critical with cherries. So, you know, um, say you're picking citrus or something, I, I don't know all the details, but you know, you, you might be able to just have a, a bin of uh, citrus sitting there, um, non-refrigerated for a certain amount of hours. With cherries, we, we have to rush them back into the uh, receivable pack, packing shed uh, really quickly to hydrocool them. So there's all these uh, areas where we need to be organised. We need to have enough tractors and you know enough equip equipment and people, uh, staff ready to uh, get the job done and, and help on forklifts and all those sort of things. So it's actually been quite organised um, and that comes down to years of experience. So it's uh, there's always a lot going on and to plan for. From a time perspective, it's changed hugely over the years. Um, when I was a little kid, uh, I, I think, you know, m my dad could probably, mum and dad could comment better on this, but you would have seen itinerant uh, professional picker type people that would get around and travel the different regions, pick cherries, earn good money, then they'd move on to maybe citrus and then apples and different crops around the country and we'd see them return each year um then we used to get a lot of backpackers uh and, and other locals students and other people would work uh picking and packing these days we're, we're reliant on backpackers and uh students but it's changed a little bit the backpackers of old used to be perhaps more european today they're, they're a mixture of um people from all different countries all, all around the world which is great um, but, you know, the situation at the moment, a lot of backpackers and students had to fly home due to COVID. So it's, it's a huge, huge issue where we've never faced staff shortages, but we're getting by. So it's a lot of, a lot of work and a lot of effort. And we're really appreciative of that by all of our uh, staff who are currently uh, doing long hours to get the job done. Well, our, our staff are uh, preparing the day before. So they're putting out um, all the picking lugs and 
getting the blocks prepared, ready to pick the night before. And then uh, pickers are arriving on site 5.36 in the morning uh, and the cool of the morning is great for both the fruit and, and working conditions when it's nice and cool. Um, but really it's just about uh, knuckling down and a, a bit of technique, which I think most most of our staff, they're, they're learning with, within sort of three or four days getting up to a, a good speed and, uh, you know, the people who love it, they, they just get really into it and they're, they're picking with a piece rate. So there's a, a great incentive to uh, to consistently pick uh, quickly and, and well and uh, that they do really quite well out of it. Every year is different. I mean, uh, when it's all going fantastic, it's you, you get a real buzz. When it's a bit of a slog, again, that's just farming. We, we have to knuckle down. Um, this year has been quite wet, um, not as sunny as we'd like spring, but so that, that sort of held things back a little bit and there's probably a little bit less fruit around this year than other years and that's caused the price to go up. Um, so that's interesting when we're talking with our customers and, um, you know, getting organised for Christmas with the big build-up and big supplies into stores, of course. Um, we're, we're having conversations and trying to uh, work out what sort of volumes we'll have um, and then uh, hope, hoping that, you know, it just unfolds smoothly in, in the weeks in the lead up to Christmas. These hand-picked fruits, I, I think they're really special, be it the cherries or berries. Um, you know, it, it, it is a really delicate fruit. So, you know, our pickers are, are trained to be careful how they pick the fruit, keep the stems on, make sure that they're not picking them off the buds uh, for next year's crop. That's really important. And we can't have leaves or any de debris in the uh, in the cherries. So, again, they're, they're picking that carefully. Uh, so it's a really handcrafted uh, crop from start to finish. Weather variables have a huge impact on the yearly crop. So how does Stephen work to maximise yield and ensure quality? Yeah, we produce a couple thousand tonne. Uh, it does vary from year to year, um, just depending on uh, what the crop set's like. Uh, depends on how many ch cherries are on each tree. Uh, then, depending on the weather, depends on what our uh, marketable yield is, which gets packed through the, uh, the grading system. Yeah, it's quite remarkable technology. Uh, so there's conveyor belts that take every single individual cherry and they rotate each individual cherry under a series of cameras. And those cameras are using uh, both uh, colour, black and white and near infrared, which is able to actually penetrate and see through the skin of the cherry and it'll it'll show up where there's a little defect or if a cherry's too soft or if it happened to have a, a rotten spot, which we don't see very often, but it would uh, tell the computers or the computers are seeing those images and making decisions in, you know, thousands of a second time and uh, rejecting that fruit so it doesn't end up in the first grade. The air jet, it, it just ejects the, the cherry from the conveyor into a, uh, like a pouch and, and that's all... Uh, nicely padded and uh, from the pouch it drops into a water flume and that water flume's uh, carrying icy cold hydro-cooled water and then it's uh, conveying by the water uh, through to where the sorting lane is and then we it's really not sorting these days compared to you know when we had hand sorting it's really just a final inspection uh, if there is any you know ones that the cameras might have missed, uh, we pull them out but then uh, they're straight into the box, uh, straight into a a pack down room which again is refrigerated and uh, they're into the box cold to lock in that freshness. Stephen's cherries are available in supermarkets and fruit shops but there's nothing like the satisfaction he gets from watching families pick and consume them on farm. All the major supermarkets buy our cherries but you know, specialist green grocers um, they're, they're fantastic customers of ours and uh, we, we love it that they uh, you know care for their displays and put our uh, our branded cherries out on display uh, for everyone. And oh, look, we do the farm gate, of course, um, that's popular around Melbourne, but, uh, and um, online orders too, but uh, that's been a, a little bit of a challenge this year with uh, some of the um, transit issues uh, that's that's happening in logistics at the moment, but we're getting through those issues. But uh, yeah, so there's a variety of places, plus we export about 40% of our crop um, as well. It's not just that Stephen loves cherries and the daily challenges of running a farm. He also thinks it's important that farms are run by families 
rather than large corporations. Glenn and I, we've we've worked really hard together to build and grow the business, and uh, it's hard, long hours. Um, it's a lot of demands. It can be really tricky at times with all sorts of different challenges, be it the weather, be it all sorts of different things. Um, so no, I don't consider it's ever been on a platter, but um, I was incredibly fortunate to be born into a family that, um, you know, I consider my mum and dad absolute top of their, their league as far as their uh, running of the business and growing really good quality fruit. Um, and, you know, from a reasonably young age, that's what I'd all, always wanted to do. So um, we managed the farm. Um, our sister was involved for some years, but uh, her, her kids, uh, they help us out, which is, which is great to see more family. And uh, my kids are a bit young yet, and um, Glenn's kids, they're, they're off studying and doing some other work at the moment, but uh, hopefully, yeah, we can continue on as a family business. I think anyone in family business would say it's got its challenges, but look, I, I really think for farming and specialty farming, like horticulture and in particular cherries, the, the degree of difficulty is right up there. And I'm, I'm quite passionate that family farming does have a future. Um, I think corporate business performs well in some areas where, you know, there's high degrees of replication. There's so much intricate detail with a crop like cherries that I, I just think it's really conducive to operate in a family business environment. And when I say a family business environment, we, we really do consider um, certainly all of our seasonal, uh, sorry, our permanent staff, but even our seasonal staff, we, we consider them at the time when it's busy and everyone needs to knuckle down and work together and uh, get get the job done, we, we really do consider that it is just a bigger, broader family of, of business. So uh, that's the way we approach it. And uh, yeah, I, I think uh, there's a lot going for family businesses. Farming isn't easy, but Stephen appreciates the variety, the challenges, the personal connections and the pure enjoyment of seeing people love the cherries he's worked so hard to grow. Uh, it's good variety. Uh, it's a challenge, so you never never get tired of doing the same thing day after day after day. It's always changing. Um, and, you know, people come and go through through the season and year to year. We see a lot of people come and return back, uh, which is terrific. We love, love having those same people back. Um, but a lot of new people come, and that's always good too. Proud of our staff, of course, but, you know, just proud when visitors come or you see customers um, eating cherries and they're really enjoying them. Um, you know, family's a big thing. When, when we see family groups coming as visitors or, you know, buying cherries and it's actually part of their family occasions or traditions, that's, that's really good to see. Cherries are a signal of summer. They're a staple on the Christmas table, shiny and happy and full of promise. They're also a challenging yet satisfying fruit to grow, especially when nurtured in a family environment as they are at Cherry Hill Orchards. This is The Producers, a Deep in the Weeds production. I'm Danny Vallant. Stay tuned as we talk to some of Australia's best farmers, makers and growers. Follow us on Instagram at Producers Podcast or contact us via deepintheweeds.com.au.